All right, welcome to today's class on DocuSign 101 and how that works with KW commands. I'll be showing you how the two systems work together for you to start and manage your transactions. My name is Leah with Scott LaVoy Marketing. And in today's class, again, I'll be taking you through all the basics of DocuSign. So if you're new to DocuSign or you're just getting started, this will be a great class, a slower paced class to take you through starting your transactions in command, accessing your forms in DocuSign. So your forms are accessed in DocuSign editing those forms and sending those out for electronic signatures. I'll also be showing you how you can submit those signed forms to your office staff for review. So my goal in this class is to take you through an entire transaction process so that you get your feet wet and start to feel comfortable with that. So to get started, we do need to log into command. Anytime that you start a transaction, you will always want to start it in command. All right, so to do that, we'll go to agent.kw.com. So that's where I am here on my screen. Again, that's agent.kw.com. I remember that like it's the agent login for kw.com. So again, agent.kw.com. If it doesn't log you in automatically, you can go ahead and put in your username and password and click sign in. Of course, I know that you guys probably have 9 million passwords for everything. I know I do. Um, so if you have any trouble remembering the password here, uh, first of all, your username is typically something like your first initial and your last name and maybe a number. Your last name is more common. And then your password, that is case sensitive, so it does require an uppercase letter, lowercase letter, and a number, if that helps jog your memory. But if you have any trouble, feel free to click forgot password. Or if, you know, that doesn't work for you, we can always help you as well. So I'm going to put my, our email address in the chat, the Zoom chat. It's support at Scott. LeroyMarketing.com. <clears throat> if you have any trouble resetting your password, feel free to shoot us an email. We just need your username for command and we can help you reset that. While we're on that topic, yeah, if you guys ever need help with anything, shooting us a quick email is definitely the quickest way to get a hold of us. Our goal during normal business hours is to answer your email between five and 10 minutes. Now, be a little gentle on that turnaround. You know, sometimes we get a little crazy, but just know we are. We have a whole team working to get back to you as quickly as possible, either letting you know, hey, that's something that we can do for you. We can take that off your plate or here are quick steps on how you can do that on your end. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or need anything. Again, that's support at scottlevoymarketing.com. All right, so now that we're logged into command, we do need to just do one bit of housekeeping to make sure that your DocuSign account is linked to command. So if you could follow me in your account, to click on your name on the top right of command. <clears throat> and of course, guys, if you are just watching to follow along, that's absolutely fine. This class will be up recorded shortly after. But if you are following along, let's go ahead and click on your name on the top right of command and select settings from that dropdown. All right, so one more time, we'll just click on our name from the top right of command, and then we'll select settings from that drop down. And that will take you directly to your connected apps that you have linked to command. Now, I like to make sense of this section by comparing it to an iPhone or an Android, any smartphone. So let's say you get a new iPhone and out of the box, you know, your new iPhone or Android has really great features to it. However, you can go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download further apps to increase the functionality of your smartphone. Same concept here. So command has a lot of really great features out the box, but you can link up additional apps to increase the functionality of command. DocuSign is one of those apps we'll need to have linked up. So for DocuSign, if that's not on the top of your list, okay, your list will probably be in a different order because your connected apps are first. If you need to scroll down, feel free to find DocuSign, but you want to go ahead and find that connected status. If it it's saying, you know, it's, if it's not connected, you can click connect account to the right of DocuSign. Now, great question, Christina. Can I connect an existing DocuSign account to command? So unfortunately, if you had created like a free DocuSign account previous to command, that would not be compatible with command. Um, we would recommend using your KW uh, email address to create the DocuSign account, the KW compatible DocuSign account, because KW has their own specific DocuSign account, which is KW Rooms. I'll show you guys that. 
Um, but unfortunately, previously used DocuSign accounts or previously created DocuSign accounts are not compatible with command. Feel free to shoot us an email though, support at scottlaroymarketing.com. We can look at your situation specifically and advise further on how you can best use your business email moving forward for DocuSign. So shoot us an email on that. All right. So we do want to, again, make sure that you have your DocuSign connected, all right? And we want to click Connect Account to the right. If you do not already see that, that will allow you to either create the DocuSign account right from here, okay? If, if you are creating a DocuSign account, first of all, this is something that we can help you with. If you do not have a DocuSign account linked up or you do not have one created, feel free to shoot us an email. We can get that done for you real quick. Um, however, if you want to go ahead and set that up yourself, you can absolutely do that. It'll prompt you to put in your business email address and it'll send you an invitation email. But again, feel free to contact us if you need any help with that. All right, guys, so now that we have confirmed that we have our DocuSign account linked up to command, let's go ahead and get started on a practice transaction. Now, before I do that, I do wanna pass out the class notes. So let me grab those. And I'm going to copy this link in the Zoom chat. <clears throat> if you'd like to open it up, I'll, I'll open it on my screen so I can show you what I'm sending out. So I'm gonna pull this over for my other screen here. So this is a, a Google Doc that I have collected all the notes that I have on DocuSign, the steps, we're gonna be opening the top one for today's class, but and also all the tip videos that are pertaining to DocuSign. So I highlighted the tip videos that are not covered in our DocuSign 101 and 201 classes, which the DocuSign 201 class is next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time if you'd like to attend. But these tip videos will further your knowledge on that. So th these are typically 10 minute tip videos um, and also additional videos at the bottom that we, I would recommend watching further that we have recorded. All right, for right now, if you can scroll up to the top and I would like you to open the DocuSign steps I'll send, I'll send out a link directly to this in the chat as well. This is that first link. Let's go ahead and click on that. And so what this is, I'll put this link in the chat as well <clears throat> real quick. But what this is, is I try to write down steps one through 10, how to do a transaction in command with little videos and screenshots. So this is what I'll be following in today's class. I'm putting this in the chat. Um, I'll be following this in today's um, class. I'll pull it on my other screen here to walk you guys through a practice transaction. But if you can always print this out and have this on your desk so that when you go to do a transaction, you know, a couple weeks, that's still fresh on mind. All right, guys, so let's get started on this practice transaction. And the first thing we need to do is actually go to the contact section of your command database. So your contact, your client, does need to be in your command database first in order to create a transaction or create an opportunity, which I'll be walking you through. But the first step is, and on those notes that I just sent you guys, right, uh, we have step one, we logged into command. Step two, we are now adding our client to our database, okay? So to do so, let's go ahead and click on the contact icon on the left-hand side command menu, and that'll have the little, little contact icon. So the second option down. If your contact is already in your database, you can go ahead and search for that contact. I'm gonna add a contact on the top right. If you'd like to do the same to add a practice contact, you can click add contact on the top right. Now it's really important to have a practice contact in your account so that you can send yourself things before you send it to you know, every person that you know in your database. So you know, I always recommend adding a practice contact to send yourself smart plans or campaign emails first or anything from DocuSign so you feel comfortable before sending that to your database. So you can name the contact practice practice, te test contact, you know, your favorite movie star. I've been watching How I Met Your Mother lately, so I think I'll do Robin Shrabotsky. Maybe that's right. And then for an email address, let's go ahead and put in an email address that you have that's outside of the KW system. So a personal email address, again, so you can see what it looks like when your clients receive things from the system. And just because I always get asked this question at this point in class on how relationships, right, how husband and wives might work in command, right, command does want you to enter the spouse in separately as a separate contact in your database. 
So you can click add relationship right here. And that will allow you to link the spouse if they're already in your command database. So I don't think I have the spouse in there. Let's see. I do. So since I already have the spouse in my command database, I can easily search for that spouse and link them up right away. However, if I haven't added them yet, you can actually click add right here to add that contact's name to your database, but no contact information would be saved to that. You would just need to go over to that contact to fill in the, you know, their email address and phone number. However, again, you do want to enter spouses in as two separate contacts in your command database. All right, that's all we really need to do. So I'll go ahead and click the create option on the bottom. To finish creating that contact. All right, and step three on those notes I sent you guys is we're just going to use the search bar on the top left of command to go ahead and search for that contact and open it up. Um, so you will need to go ahead and use that search bar, search the client's name. And simply click on their name to open that. All right, so once you've opened up the contact, and again, you can simply do that by searching your database and clicking on their name to open it. So the way that I would recommend creating opportunities is actually from the contact record. So let's take a look at that. So on the top right, you'll see the opportunities option on the top white toolbar, you can click on that. Okay, this will allow you to see any opportunity that you have created for this client. So this is how I really prefer searching for my opportunities as well, as it'll allow me to see, you know, anytime this client has bought or sold, or if, especially if it's an investor client, I may have multiple opportunities. Now, if the question in your head is, what the heck is an opportunity? It's a good one. Okay, I wondered the same thing when I was learning this system. And it's really kind of as corny as it sounds. Um, an opportunity, you'll create an opportunity every time that you have an opportunity for a sale. So anytime that you have a lead, um, command will be your lead to close management tool. So you can create opportunities, which I'll be doing with you in just a moment here, and it will allow you to put that opportunity on your pipeline so that you can track it the entire duration. And I'll show you guys all of that, so bear with me on that. However, in the opportunities section on the top right, let's go ahead and click create opportunity, plus sign on the right side to kick that off so you guys can see a real life example. All right, so we click on create opportunity on the right hand side. And that'll take you to create an opportunity. Um, and anytime you see a bunch of fields in command, the first thing I want you to look at is, okay, which ones have the red asterisks, asterisks next to it? I struggle with that word, the red stars, Let's stick with that. Those are the fields that are required. So the other fields can be left blank. It makes it look a little less overwhelming to me. Um, so let me just start by telling you the two fields that you really have to fill out, two, three fields. Okay, so amongst all of this, um, the two, three fields that are really most important is, let's start with the opportunity type. Okay, so opportunity type, that's where we have um, to select our listing, or if it's a listing buyer, landlord, or tenant. This cannot be changed after you create the opportunity. So if you are taking notes on today's class, this would be a noteworthy moment um, of you know, these three items I'm gonna tell you, you need to pay a, a special attention to. Um, when creating the opportunity. So this is one of them, the opportunity type, make sure you're selecting what that is. I'll, I'm gonna do a listing for today's class, but <clears throat> a buyer opportunity will be the same concept. So either one. Next, so number two, we need to pay attention to this client field. Okay, so my client is already in there because I did create the opportunity from you know, the contact record. However, if I need to add a co-seller, I can do that right from the dropdown. And for team member agents, hold tight to your question. I will answer that next. Okay, so if uh, you do have to have that co-seller in your database first, your contact has to be in your database first to add it to an opportunity. Okay, and the third and final field that you 100% have to do something with is this commission rate field. Okay, and this commission rate, it won't allow you to go next without um, filling that out, but that's just talking about your side of the transaction, so not the total 6%, just your typical 3%. 
Um, if you don't have a, you know, <clears throat> a, an agency agreement signed quite yet, no worries, this is changeable. So I would just enter in what you usually charge. All right, guys. And then you, I don't want you yet, but that at that point you can click create. Now I wanna go over the other fields because it's important that you know them. All right, so real quick, let me go over these fields and team member agents. I will do a little team section for you guys as well in just a second here. So for everyone, for all agents, solo or team agents, okay, starting at the top, just to explain these fields, um, if you're a part of more than one market center or an expansion agent, um, or you're transferring rather to, you know, from one KW office to another, make sure you're paying attention which market center you're running this transaction through. Okay. You only have one market center, that's normal. Okay, team member agents, hold, hold on one sec. Okay, so coming on down to the opportunity type, right, we went over that. But the owner on the right hand side, that's slightly confusing, um, that is talking about, not talking about the owner of the property, that's talking about the owner of the opportunity. So that will either say your name or your rainmaker's name if you're on a team. And what a rainmaker is, is like your team leader or your, you're the listing agent. So the agent who started the team essentially. So hopping on down, we did talk about the client and co-seller, but opportunity name Right. Um, if you do know the property address, your office does typically search by the pr property address. So if it's a listing, for example, you could go ahead and put in the property address. So, and I'm just talking about like the street address is typically the main item that they would need. However, I know that if you're representing the buyer, you might not know the property address out the gate and that's totally fine. Okay, and the last two fields on the bottom, remember, I'm just skipping to the ones with the red stars. The last two fields on the bottom here, this is talking about where you want the opportunity on your pipeline, which I have not shown you quite yet. So let's just go ahead and leave that on the first phase, typically just asking if it's, you know, are we growing? This, is it a lead? Do you have an appointment or is it active? Okay, and we'll talk about that further. All right, so um, at that point, you can click create. Now for team member agents, so this is specifically for you real quick. Okay, so if you're a solo agent, feel free to check out for a second. I'll let you know when you're time back into bat. All right, for team member agent, um, semi-recently KWRI did split your team database and your personal database. So you'll notice that if you click on your name on the top right of command, you will have you know, your team profile or vice versa, depending on which one you've selected. Now, in order to create a, an opportunity on your team pipeline, your contact has to be in your team database to do so. So you can do one of two things. You can either directly input your contacts into your team database. Now, please note that those contacts stay assigned to you as the agent. So if you're ever to leave the team, those contacts come with you, okay? Putting them in the team database just allows uh, the contact to be used with the team tools. So you can either put your contact directly in the team database by clicking on your team name from the top right and entering your contact, or if your contact is already on your personal profile in command and you just switch that to the team, like in this case, this is what you would do. <clears throat> to the right of the contact's name, you can click on the three dots here and click change account. Again, this is for team member agents only. If we're trying to move this contact from your personal to your team database, we click the three dots and click change account. And then you can go ahead and select the team name. Now, before you click change account, I just want to let you know um, that this will remove this contact off any personal smart plans that you may have them on. However, they can be put on a team smart plan. It'll also remove any personal tags that you have. Um, however, team tags can be added um, and system tags will stay as well. Just wanted to let you know, um, but you can go ahead and select the team name and click change account. It will move the contact over to the team so that you can create the opportunity from that contact, okay? And so then when you go to click create the opportunity, you should see your team name selected. So team member agents, when you're creating your opportunity, you do want to see your team name selected. And when I do select my team name, <clears throat> it changes a couple things in my account. First of all, it'll show the owner as my rainmaker, and that's the team lead, right? The lead agent. And for team member agents only, you do have this additional field at the bottom here to allow you to assign other team members to your opportunity. So 
Um, your Rainmaker can see all of your opportunities off default. However, if you want another team member to be able to collaborate on your opportunity, you need to set them as an assignee from this dropdown. And then when you click create, it would add that opportunity to their pipeline as well. All right, guys. Let me know, uh, team member agents, if you have any further questions on that. Um, in, in theory, though, uh, to the question on is this why I have duplicate names, in, in theory, you would not be able to add the contact to your database twice, even if it was, you know, one in the team contact database and one in the personal database. But of course, if you have Beatrice, if you want to shoot us an email, support scottlorymarketing.com, we'd be more than happy to look at your account specifically. All right, so if all agents, team, solo agents, if everyone can come back in, <clears throat> we are now going to uh, finish up this opportunity here. All right, I'm just adding in my other contact. All right, so again, for everyone to continue, we need to mainly select the opportunity type and the commission rate. Okay, and so really when you're going to do this opportunity, you can fly through creating it in about 30 seconds. Okay, I just want to take you through all the different fields, right, so that you feel comfortable with it. However, um, when you're actually going through this, remember the main fields you need to fill out are opportunity type, Check your clients, that's number two, and the commission rate, that's number three, and we can click create. Okay, if it's not accepting your client, I would think that you are on a team, would be my best guess, and that your client is not added to the team database. If that's not true, Verena, feel free to shoot us an email. I'd be happy to look after class. All right, guys. So once I click create on the bottom, it will create that opportunity. And as I mentioned, this is how I find it easiest to search for my opportunities, as it will always show you all opportunities created for that client right from this record here. So if I forgot, if I created that, I can go ahead and see that right away. So I'm simply going to click on the opportunity name to open it. Okay, and that will take me into the opportunity details. Now we're about to go into DocuSign. Okay, so this is how you will access DocuSign every time. So where we are right now, we open the opportunity. So we're looking at the opportunity details. The reason this is important is this section auto fills all, all the information into DocuSign onto all of your forms in that DocuSign room. So again, anything entered in here, so your client's contact information, the property information, right, property address, your personal contact information or, you know, your business contact information will pull all into DocuSign. So if we want to increase, you know, the amount that auto fills into DocuSign, you can absolutely click the pencil icons to edit this information further. This is how you would edit the opportunity name and change any of this information. Okay, but for listing specifically, right? So buyer opportunities do not have this feature, but if you're representing the listing, you'll have an option that says select from listings at the top here to allow you to search for the property to autofill all the information from the MLS, which is super cool. So if you did uh, select a listing opportunity, you can follow along, you can watch my screen. So to the right of my client's names, I'll go ahead and click select from listings. Okay, so select from listings. So on the right hand side, so it may show you all of your listings immediately. So that's what KW is working on, getting your listings to display right away here. However, if it's not, um, it's not, that doesn't mean that it's not in there. It just means they're still working on that feature. So in case you don't see your listing right away right here, you can change it from only my listings to all listings on the top right. To search for your listing, I like to search by the MLS number, just to cut to the chase, a little easier. And then simply click on the, on select next to the property name to link that to your opportunity and to pull in all the property information to autofill into DocuSign. Okay, so you can see I clicked select next to one of those properties. And once I did that, it did autofill all of that information right into my command opportunity which is going to autofill into DocuSign. 
Now, if you don't know the uh, property address quite yet, I'll show you how you can add that at a later time and still autofill that to DocuSign. But for now, let's go ahead and venture into DocuSign. So to do that, let's go to the Documents section. Yeah, so the listing would have to be in the MLS first for this to work. Great question, Alexander. So that's why I'm going to show you how to come back. So if your listing isn't in the MLS, which, you know, starting a listing agreement and so forth, it probably wouldn't be. So if you don't know the listing address quite yet, like in this magical transaction, I'm going to show you how you can come back, link the um, listing once it is live in the MLS, and then prompt that to autofill back into DocuSign. So great question, Alexander. I'll get back to you on that one as we go along. All right, so now we are going into DocuSign. We are creating our DocuSign room. And before I do that, I want to also answer uh, Sandy. Great question. If they are a buyer and a seller, do you need to create two different opportunities for that person? So let's talk about that real quick. It's a terrific question. Uh, yes, so if you, <clears throat> the opportunity, um, let, okay, let me start over. If you're representing a client who is selling their home with you and buying the next home, that is going to be two separate opportunities because it's two separate transactions. So you'll have a, a different opportunity, a different DocuSign room per transaction or, or per um, property. So now let's go ahead and get into DocuSign on that note. Okay, so the first time that you go to start your doc, and this is really important, guys. The first time that you go to start your DocuSign room, you have to start that from your command opportunity first. So again, I'm going to say it again. This is a noteworthy moment. When you are going to start your transaction, it is super important that you do the steps that we did today. Step one, we added the contact to our database. Step two, we created the opportunity. Now step three, to create the DocuSign room, we're selecting the Documents tab in our Opportunity and clicking Start a Transaction. The reason that is so important is it will link your Opportunity and your DocuSign room together, <clears throat> excuse me, to allow the two to work together more efficiently so you can pull over all of your signed forms. And I'll show you the benefit of that as we go along during class. It's really important that you start your transaction from Command and then start your DocuSign room from the, again, the Documents tab of your Opportunity, we're clicking Start a Transaction. And you may not have two options, okay? I have DocuSign and dot .loop <clears throat> linked to Command. However, if you click Start a Transaction and that goes straight to DocuSign, that's pretty normal. Okay, if, if nothing happens at all, make sure you don't have a pop-up blocker on. It's typically the issue. So if you click Start a Transaction and just nothing happens, uh, check your URL bar. Usually there's an icon that shows you like it was blocked. However, you should have what I see on my screen here. So it will pull you into DocuSign Rooms. And you will need to know your login and password for DocuSign. Um, it'll prompt you to log in the first time each day for security reasons. And that'll keep you logged in. Um, but this is one of the 9 million passwords you'll need to remember. So we'll put in our DocuSign email address and our password and click Login. All right, and that will take me into my DocuSign room. And if you've been hearing the DocuSign, the term DocuSign room and wondering really what that means, um, what that is, is it's the same thing as a loop in dot loop. So whereas you had a loop for each transaction in dot loop, you're going to have a room per transaction in DocuSign. It's just essentially where you'll access all of your forms for that transaction, send your forms, um, and receive those signed back. Okay, so I do see that I have this DocuSign room created that is named um, the same thing as my opportunity. And I have the property linked. Again, you don't know the property quite yet. I'll show you how you can link it afterwards. Okay, but the first thing that we need to do is add our document. Add our documents to our DocuSign room. Now, for this next little section, guys, I'm going to show you how to access your forms in DocuSign. However, this is slightly different depending on what state you're in, which association you're a part of. So bear with me, I'm gonna show you the different options, okay? But unfortunately, it's not the same one answer for everyone. So um, first thing that we're going to do, so we're in the Documents tab of our DocuSign room. And we're, we're gonna click on Add on the top right. 
in the Documents tab of your DocuSign room. Let's go ahead and click on Add. And let's focus on this DocuSign Forms option first. So that second option down, okay, what that means is these forms will be interactive, which means you can just click to start typing in them. So in theory, this is where you'll access your board forms that you can just type in to edit. So let's talk about how we can get those in there for sure though. So we click on add and then the DocuSign forms option, again, that second option down. <clears throat> and again, this might look slightly different for each of you. Now, if you're looking at something similar to what I am, great, hold tight. If you are instead seeing a pop-up box that says something like uh, verify your nerds ID, you know, for your realtor association, that may be necessary for your area. However, let's see first. So some states do have your forms already added into DocuSign. So let's just check on the status of this. So if you are seeing that additional pop-up that's prompting you to validate your nerds ID, just click the little blue link on the bottom right that says to skip this step for now and I'll show you how to get back to where it would take you anyway. So assuming you click skip, you should see something like I'm seeing here. And this is a fairly new view of how to view your forms in DocuSign and yours will look different than mine. So starting off on the left hand side, you'll see any groups that your office has created from your forms. Okay. Again, if you don't have groups, your office would set that up for you. So maybe that they're not use, utilizing that feature quite yet. However, if you do have group names with forms in them, I really like to be able to search with my group names right here to find those forms. And I'll come back to this. However, on the bottom left as well, I also have my MLS forms and my association forms. So I can access those. However, they are categorized further on the top in my group section. So it makes it a little easier for me to find, thanks to my office staff. Um, so depending on the group, and guys, if you don't have any forms here, don't panic, I'll, I'll tell you how you can get them there. So if you do have some forms in there, let's go ahead and uh, click on the group name and you can go ahead and select the forms that you would like and click add selected. So if you do have your forms, feel free to go ahead and search through, kind of look through your forms, what you have and click the add selected if you'd like to. Now, if you are not seeing your forms in here, it, there is a possibility that your nerds ID needs to be added or that your area uses zip forms. So to do that, let's go check on that and I'll walk you through that. So I'm gonna click out of that. <clears throat> if you could follow me to click um, either your headshot on the top right in a circle or your initial in a circle on the top right and select preferences from that dropdown. So again, we're clicking on our initials or our headshot in the top right and selecting preferences. And on the left hand side, let's click on integrations. Okay, let me start by saying California agents, uh, you typically use zip forms. So uh, you get a zip forms, login and password from car.org that you can go ahead and put in your username and password here. Um, not not only California agents have zip forms. So if you're provided zip forms by your board, you can absolutely link zip forms up to your account right here. All right, but the main thing I'd like you to check <clears throat> is the nerds ID, okay? A lot of places, a lot of associations provide their board forms through their nerds ID um, validation here. Okay, so the second section down for the nerds ID. Now, this is where I mentioned that it's different for each state and different for each association. So we've been trying to reach out to offices in each state to find the answer to how you guys get your board forms. Um, for example, a lot of states do use nerds ID. So like Texas agents, this is how you would get your forms. Florida agents, Pennsylvania agents, South Carolina agents. Um, we have notes <laughs> that we're trying to keep up with that. So if you're not sure how to get your um, forms and you're not seeing your association from this organized list, feel free to shoot us an email and we can help you with that. We can help you find access to your forms. Either we have it in our notes or we'll reach out to your office staff and you know get to the bottom of it with you. However, a lot of states do it through your nerds ID, um, but check it, feel free to check in with us if you're not sure and we're more than happy to help. All right, guys. So this is how you would mainly gain access to your forms, again, Contact us if you have questions, if you are not able to link them with either of these steps. But let's go on back to our DocuSign room 
to go ahead and pull those forms in and then edit them and send them for signatures. The fun stuff. So I'm going to click on dashboard on the very top white toolbar. <clears throat> so we're just going back to our most recent um, open room. Okay, so you can do that by going to your rooms or your dashboard here and simply clicking on the room name to open that. All right, and when you click on a room, right, when you open a room in DocuSign, it will take you on over to the details section of your DocuSign room, which should be partially filled out as it pulls over all that information from your opportunity, like I was mentioning, right? So your, your client's contact information, the property information, if you link that up already, that will pull over to the doc details tab to then autofill on your documents. So let's come back to our documents tab. And if you have those forms in your room, you can go ahead and click to open it. I'm just gonna pull one in real quick so I can show you. I'm gonna pull in a listing agreement. Um, you can really use any for form, it will be the same concept. So you can select one or multiple forms at a time to pull that in. And click add selected. And now I can see that my documents have been added to my DocuSign room. Now, if you are using zip forms, please note <clears throat> you will edit your forms and access your forms from zip forms. So if you're a California agent or you are using zip forms with DocuSign, you will pull your zip form in by clicking add on the top right and selecting zip form instead. And from what I've seen though, you would still edit the forms from zip forms directly and then pull them into DocuSign to send for electronic signature. All right, so assuming you have these forms in your DocuSign room, let's go ahead and click on one so I can show you guys how to edit it. I think you guys will really like the process of editing these forms. DocuSign makes it pretty easy. So all I did was simply click on a form to open it. And since it's an interactive form, okay, anytime you hear the word interactive form, that always means fillable, right? So when I open the form, I can simply click to select or fill out any fields. Now, the, you will see some fields have autofilled, right? Some of these fields like my client's contact information, my brokerage information, this is pulling over from the command opportunity. Okay? Um, now, it does work both ways. So within DocuSign, just a heads up, let's say if I didn't have a county or whatever the field was, if I were to add in any information on the form and click save, what that would do is it would update it in the DocuSign details as well. So it'll update it for all your forms in this specific room, which is pretty cool. So updating one essentially updates all of your forms. <clears throat> so again, what, what I'm saying here is, you know, any information is autofilling as you can see on your forms. However, it works back and forth. So if you add additional information to a field that autofills, it will update that for all future forms that you pull in and work with in DocuSign. So going through and editing the forms, again, pretty easy, you just click to start typing. The main thing to know here is to not be alarmed by the lack of any initial fields or signature fields. Those don't show up quite yet in DocuSign until after we add our clients to the envelope. So that's normal. Um, my only other recommendation is as you're going through and filling out you know, the pages of the form, you know, especially if this is a longer form, I, I usually always click save and close multiple times as I go along just to make sure that's saving my work. So if you do that, you know, click save and close, and then you can open it up to continue working on it and so forth. Okay, so again, I, I would recommend clicking save and close on the top right multiple times throughout the transact or throughout editing the form. Now just a heads up, uh, you do have some further options on the top right. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you want to print out the form, so let's say you know, you're going on a listing appointment, you want to type up your form because it looks more professional, but then you want to print it out, bring it on your listing appointment so you can explain it to them and have them hand sign it. It's absolutely fine. If you do that, you know, you, know, you can type up the entire form. Uh, the document actions looks like a little piece of paper with the corner folded on the top right. And you can click to 
print it right from here or even download it. Okay, so you do have some options from here on the top right. What I want you to keep in the back of your mind because what we're going to do next is create an envelope, but I'm going to show you how to do it with multiple forms. But the create envelope is A, a term that was not in dot loop. So that might be new to some of you. Um, and B, creating the envelope is how you will go about sending out your forms once they're ready for signature. So you can do it for just this form here. But instead, I'm going to click save and close so I can show you how to do it for multiple forms. Okay, so in this example, first thing you would want to do is after you pull in the forms, you click on each one to go through and edit any fields that you need to fill out as the agent. Okay, and then now what we're going to want to do is add that, add these to an envelope so we can send those over to our client to sign once we've edited those. So to do so, I'll go ahead and click. So it, you'll notice if you hover your mouse over any of the, um, any of the forms, it'll have this little dot right here. If you click on that, it'll give you this toolbar right here. So this is not here if you don't have any of the forms selected, see it disappears. If you click on those, it'll make those appear. You can also click select all on the top right. And this is just giving you the bulk actions for basically everything we saw in the document actions. So this icon is the same, and you'll notice if I hover my mouse over the icon, it tells me what that does, and that does create an envelope. Okay. And I'll explain what the envelope does further here. But if you could again go ahead and select the fields. And then go ahead and click the Create Envelope option. All right, and now pull those forms into an envelope. Now let's make sense of what an envelope is. What are we doing here? All right, so I like to think of snail mail to make sense of, of an envelope, okay? So if I were gonna send forms out in snail mail, what, what would be the first thing I would do is I would grab an envelope, okay? So check, I got the envelope and I have stuffed the forms in my envelope. Okay, if you need to add further forms, you absolutely can from here. So there is an option to add forms right from the envelope as well. So if you want to add forms right from your DocuSign room, you can click on that room docs option to go ahead and pull in further forms from your DocuSign room. You do have the option to also add PDFs right from your DocuSign, um, from your envelope. So if you'd like to upload that from your computer, I'll also show you how you can upload a PDF to your DocuSign room directly. However, um, in order to edit PDFs in DocuSign, you would need to pull that into an envelope. So you could upload that straight into your envelope here. Okay, so, so far what I've done, I've grabbed my envelope, I put the forms in my envelope. So now step three would generally be to add the recipients to the envelope. Okay, makes sense. So now I'm coming on down to add recipients. And you wanna select pre-tagged roles if you're given that option. So it should give you the pre-tagged roles option as long as you are sending a DocuSign interactive form. Okay, and I can set, tell these are DocuSign interactive forms from these blue little icons on here. Keep this class is being recorded so you can pause it and follow it along at that point. Unfortunately, I only have nine more minutes to go. Um, I also have a 30 minute overview on the list so you can always watch those on YouTube and pause it to follow along. So from the ad recipients, I click pre-tag roles right here. Okay, so you'll always want to select the top option. Okay, so sometimes you'll see this option vary. When you're clicking ad recipients, you always want to select the top option for pre-tag roles. When you do that, it'll pull up these roles assigned in DocuSign. This is telling DocuSign which fields do you want your clients to be able to sign. So we're gonna come over to the select option on the right-hand side. And we can go ahead and select our client from that dropdown. Okay, these clients are already in the dropdown because they pulled over from command. 
So I can go ahead and select seller two for my second client. If this is a form that you need to sign as the agent, you can line yourself up as the listing agent as well. And you can click add selected. Okay. When I add those selected, I'll see my clients added here with the email address that I'll be sending to along with their assigned role, which is they need to sign. You can add an additional message on the bottom if you would like to, however, it's not required. But if you would like to add a message, like, you know, here's the listing agreement that we spoke about on the phone. Let me know if you have any questions. You absolutely can. But again, not required. And we can go ahead and click the next option on the top right. Uh, just a heads up, you do have the option to save and close this envelope, uh, which I'll show you more on that, but that would allow you to open the envelope on your appointment if you're going on the appointment live, so you can send the forms directly at that time with your client sitting next to you. Now click on next. Right, and that will take me over to the envelope where we don't have to do a whole lot here. So since we already edited these forms in our DocuSign room, right, they, they're already filled out, right? We already have our client's information filled out. The form is entirely filled out. So we don't have to do a whole lot here, but we do need to check over to make sure that they can sign all spots. So you'll notice on the right-hand side, right, you'll see these, these colored tabs on the top of each page. Okay, these colors correspond to the drop down on the very top left. So on the top left, you should see your clients with a corresponding color next to it. Okay, each color will correspond to the field that they will be able to sign. Okay, so I do want to make sure that my clients can sign, you know, each page here just by eyeing over it. I can see I can sign a field and both of my clients can. So this is how the initial boxes will show and they will not show until this point in the transaction. So until you've added your forms to the envelope and added the recipients. Okay, the signature fields and the initial fields are added. So I usually go through to make sure I see all fields. And I usually click recipient preview on the top right, again, just to check myself. I can click recipient preview on the very top right. And I can view the form based on um, which client is viewing this. So on the top left, I can go ahead and select which client I would be viewing this as so that I can go through and make sure that my client can fill out all the fields. <clears throat> so again, I'm viewing this as my client. So if I click on start, I can actually go through and I'm not signing it on their behalf, but I am looking at it as their view to make sure that they can sign all the fields I need them to. Helps me sleep at night. All right, so once I check that over and you can do it for both clients, I can simply X out on the top right and click send on the top right. And Carolina, if you want the signing order to be different, um, you would just need to uh, it depends on which order you put them in the envelope. So I put Robin in the envelope first as seller one, and I listed um, my Barney as seller two. So that's how it lines it up. So you can switch those when you're adding your clients to the envelope. Yeah, no problem. So I'll go ahead and click send on the top right. And let me show you what DocuSign does next. So DocuSign has now sent out that form or those forms uh, to your client's email address. And it has also sent it to your email address for you to sign as the agent if it's a form that you need to sign. However, you do not need to go to your email to sign it. You can actually sign it right from your DocuSign account. <clears throat> so where we are now is in this envelopes tab. And this envelopes tab will show you any time that you sent out an envelope, right? Which means you sent out one or a group of forms. It'll show you every time that has been sent out. 
So in this case, right, here's the envelope that I just sent out. Again, right, if envelope's still kind of hard to grasp, so just think of snail mail like a physical envelope was sent, right? And so this is the status of it. It needs my signature. So I can go ahead and click on it. So signing as the agent, you can sign straight from here by clicking sign. You can also correct the form. So if your clients haven't signed it yet and you realize, oh, I need to make a correction on the envelope, I can do that here. <clears throat> and main other thing I want to show you guys is you can resend it under more. Um, so that's especially helpful if, you know, one client hasn't signed, but everyone else has, and they're like, oh, I don't even see it. Okay, you can resend it, and it will only resend it to the client who hasn't signed yet. Okay, so it won't resend it to everyone, only the person who hasn't signed yet, which is helpful. And the reason that that's so helpful is now let me show you how signed forms work in DocuSign. Okay, so I'm going to X out on the top right. Okay, so we're going to talk about how signed forms work next in DocuSign. However, um, just to talk about, you know, because I know we've hopped around tabs a little bit in our DocuSign room, so I want to make sense of that for you. Okay, the three main tabs that you'll always use in your DocuSign, tab, in your DocuSign room is details, documents, and envelopes. Okay, so to go over that again, right, details is just where everything autofills from. It's not really a whole lot you have to do from there, but it is important to know that that's where your information is autofilling from. So if you need to correct any of that information, you can. Documents tab, okay, this is where we're adding our forms to your DocuSign room. It's where you're editing your forms as well. Okay? Unless you use zip forms and you do all of that in zip forms. Um, for the question of how do you add PDFs to your DocuSign room, you can do that by clicking add on the top right and clicking computer to search for that PDF and double click on it. Okay, so that's the documents tab. And then the envelopes tab, that's the last one that I want you guys to focus on. And that is showing you any time that you have sent out one envelope or a group of envelopes, sorry, one form or a group of forms um, in an envelope, okay? This is where you can go to create new envelopes as well, okay? But that is where you can go to check on the status of your signed forms. Which brings me to one of my last um, points of how signed forms work in DocuSign. Now let's say you get a notification that one of your clients has signed. However, you have two people that need to sign the form, okay? So if you get an email notification, which you will, each time that a client signs your form, if you go to check your DocuSign room and the documents tab, you will not see that signed form yet. You will not see the signed form come back to your DocuSign room until all parties have signed or completed their action. So I just don't want you to feel confused when you come back and you're not seeing the form signed by only one party, even though you got the notification. Again, you won't see that until all parties have signed. Okay, and I'm going to hop over to another room so that I can um, show you guys what signed forms will look like. So you can just watch on my screen. All right, so um, as far as signatures go on the document, so this is another room that I have I to show you guys the differences on signed forms versus the original form. Now, these icons right here, let me start by saying that these matter. Okay, so these icons, as I may have mentioned, right, that um, blue icon here means that it's an interactive form, a form that I could just click in and start typing, right? That icon is the same icon as when we clicked on add we see that same icon here. So that always means access to our interactive forms that we can just type in. Okay, when you send that form to be signed in an envelope, it comes back as a totally separate form. So this is the original copy of my form that I edited. If I open it, it's, it's fillable, so I can just start typing. I sent it off for signatures and it comes back as a second copy of the form. You can see it has that signed. It says signed at the end and it also has this green check mark. Okay, so just so you know, that will be a separate copy of the form, it will be signed here. Now, you can edit the signed copy of the form. It is a PDF. So if I open the signed copy, you'll notice the biggest difference is I cannot just click to start typing, right? This is a PDF, which preserves the signatures, right? So it makes it so that you can't erase the signatures. Right? You can make edits to signed forms. And just so you guys know, I'll send this link out again for the notes. This is on the notes. Hold on, I'm pulling it over, guys. I'll send out the link again. 
But just so you know which tip video this corresponds to, I do have it on here for editing signed forms right here. If you want, it's a 10 minute video. If you want to watch it after this class, it'll just kind of bring this full circle for you on how to, if you need to edit the form after it's already been signed, that'll walk you through that. Okay. All right. So now that we have our form, uh, you know, imaginarily signed, let me show you the very last step in theory of the transaction, which is submitting your signed forms to your market center staff for compliance review. Okay. So again, once your forms come back signed, the final step is you need to submit those signed forms for compliance review to your office staff so that you can get paid. So to do that, I'm going to come back over to command. And if anyone needs to run, because I know I'm like three minutes over class, um, this class will be up within 24 hours on our training channel. Let me put that in the chat. And it's also, again, on the notes that I, I sent out. Um, I put on the very bottom of, you know, this tip guide here, I did put uh, the training channel here. And so this will take you to our YouTube channel, which has all of our newest classes first. So this will have our brand is new content is right on the top and we do create new content pretty much as soon as new features launch in command. That's our goal at least. So all of our new classes will always be at the top here. So I did include a link. It's just you know, youtube.com forward slash Scott Lamore marketing. If you're watching this class recorded, I'll put all of this in the description of the YouTube video. Okay, final part of class, guys. If you can stick around just like five more minutes, this is important to submit your um, paperwork to your office staff. So to do so, I'm actually going over to command. Okay, so I'm switching back to command. Those should be two separate tabs for you. Okay, so DocuSign will be a separate tab and that has a yellow DocuSign icon versus the um, command account will have the red KW logo. And we need to come to the documents tab of your opportunity, which I used to be pretty confused about. Why is there a documents tab of my opportunity and a documents tab of my DocuSign room? All right, guys, this is an important point. I know it's been a long class, but try to pay attention to this part and take notes. Um, so how the two systems work together. So your DocuSign account is being used between the agent and your client to access your forms, to get your forms edited and get those signed. Again, it's all done in DocuSign between the agent and the client. Once your forms are signed, you then need to put them in the documents tab of your opportunity to submit that for compliance review to your office staff so that you can get paid. Okay, so the opportunity document section is being used between the agent and your office for compliance paperwork and getting paid. Okay, so just to overview that for you. So let's talk about how we would add in our documents. So your screen might look slightly different than mine, depending on how your office has this set up. But in case I lost anyone, you know, you're not sure where I am, try to find, go ahead and find your um, opportunity. And again, you would do that by searching for the contact in your database. Click on the opportunities tab on the right hand side to access that opportunity. And the documents tab is where we need to go ahead and open, where you might already have a checklist display. Okay, so if your office only uses one checklist, it'll already display. However, if not, you'll see the option to click pick checklist type on the left hand side to select if, you know, what type of transaction this is. Again, these checklists are added in by your office staff. So yours will look different than mine. So I'll select the type of transaction or type of checklist. And then on the left hand side, I see specific folders with the different checklists. So my listed, under contract, and closed folders on the left-hand side that requires my signed paperwork so I can get paid and stay out of real estate jail. So in order to add our signed paperwork to our opportunity, we can do that one at a time by clicking add a file on the right-hand side of each of these form names. Now these are not the actual forms. This is a, simply a checklist. So it's simply telling you the form name and then you actually access your forms in DocuSign, right? However, now that I've gotten those forms signed, I need to go ahead and attach those to my opportunity. So again, I can do one at a time on the right-hand side, or it's more efficient to click attach multiple files at the top.
So when you click attach multiple files at the top, it will show you your checklist and it will allow you to upload each of the forms. So if you brought your forms on your appointment and had them hand signed, um, you can, and now they're in your hand, you can scan them to your computer and add them right from here. So this will allow me to browse my computer so I can go ahead and find my signed form in my computer and double click to add that. Okay, so if that's how your business works, that you get your, hand, your forms hand signed, absolutely fine. You don't really need to use DocuSign other than to download your forms or print those out. You can get them hand signed, scan them to your computer and add them to the opportunity this way. So by simply clicking to search your computer. Alternatively, if you are using DocuSign, it makes your life so easy to be able to select the DocuSign option at the top. And what it will do is it'll give you a drop down menu of any signed forms in that DocuSign room. So when that form comes back signed, it'll show in this drop down menu so you can simply click on it and it will pull that signed form from your DocuSign room to your opportunity to submit your forms for review. All right, so again, you can go through and link each individual form from your DocuSign room to the checklist item and click attach. I can see that's been attached here and I can click submit to MC. Okay, and don't do this yet, by the way, but that action clicking submit to MC would submit your paperwork over to your office staff for compliance review so that you can get paid. All right, and guys, um, of course, there is a lot more to cover with DocuSign and opportunities. Um, I do teach the DocuSign 201 class next week. Um, I don't know what day that is. Maybe the 10th? Yeah, I think it's June 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, DocuSign 201. So I'll go much more in depth to answering a lot of y'all's questions and you know the tips that'll make your DocuSign experience a lot more effective and efficient. So if you can check that out, if you can come to that class, feel free. Um, I also put those classes on the notes okay again just to show you guys one last time on this note on the notes here on the bottom that's where i have the recorded docusign 201 class so if you want to go ahead and knock that out and i know you guys had some good questions in there about customizing your opportunity pipeline um, so that class will cover that as well opportunities um, and also lastly before i let you go this again is our youtube channel on the bottom so this class will be up within 24 hours, usually more like four hours, but uh, this is where that class will be, the today's DocuSign 101 class, so you can pause it and follow along if you would like to. All right, guys, if you have, have any additional questions, I will be sticking around to try to answer some from the chat. However, you know, you guys had some great questions. Please feel free to shoot me an email, support at scottleroymarketing.com. I'm gonna put my email specifically in the chat. So again, that's support at scottleroymarketing.com. You can put attention my name, which is Leah, L-E-A-H. I handle all the DocuSign opportunities issues here. So I'd be more than happy to log into your account directly and see what's going on. So if I didn't get to your question, sorry, multitasking is hard. Just copy and paste it, shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to help you guys through this. Um, I'll be sticking around a little after class. I'm going to stop the recording. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great rest of your day.